But this is the day that the Lord has made, and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. It's preaching time. It's preaching time. If you don't mind turning in your Bibles to Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9, verse 9. It's just one verse, Luke chapter 9, verse 9. From the King James Version of the Bible, it reads like this. It says, and Herod said, John, have I beheaded? But who is this of whom I hear such things? And he desired to see him. Amen. For just a few minutes, just a few minutes, I want to preach real quick from the sermon title, Who is this? Who is this? Is this we certainly give honor to our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, the great head of the church, to the Albion Ministerial Alliance led by our president, uh, Pastor Albert Amos, to Macedonia. Uh, you are awesome, and I love you so much. I have the great privilege of being the pastor of this wonderful church, and it is one of my greatest joys. To all of God's children, we greet you this morning, we greet you this day with Jesus joy. We as the pastors and churches represent the Albion Ministerial Alliance, we've been asked to present a few words during the Lenten season. Now, as you know, Lent is a Christian annual period that starts on Ash Wednesday and lasts for 40 days. Now, in that 40 days, it does not include Sundays. It represents the 40 days that Jesus was fasting in the wilderness. This 40 days is in preparation for the resurrection or what we call Easter Sunday morning. The Lenten season, it actually began this year on Wednesday, March the 2nd, and it officially ends on Saturday, April the 16th, just before Resurrection Morning. And as I thought about Lenten season this year, I was reminded that even in 2022, and even among God's people, there are still people, watch this, who really don't know a lot about Lent because they still don't know a lot about Jesus. Can I get an amen right there? Watch this. Some of us, we hear about him, but we still don't know who he is. Some of us, we know that uh, we've heard that he's done some things, but we still haven't really seen him do those things for us. So we still don't know who he is. We heard that he can do this and he can do that. And we desire to see those things uh, for him to do those things in our lives. But we really still don't know who he is. Truth be told, truth be say, truth be told. Truth be told, those in 2022 who really don't know who Jesus is, watch this, you are not the first generation and certainly not the first person that didn't know who Jesus really was. So today, I want to take a look just real quick at a generation and a person who actually asked a question before Jesus was crucified that is still a powerful question to consider, and the question is, who is this? Lord have mercy. Well, we find in, in Luke chapter 9, if you were to go back up to around verse 7, we find that Herod the Tetrit or Herod the Prince Ruler, that Tetrit, it really stands for a title. He was the Prince Ruler of Galilee under the Roman government. Uh, we find that he had beheaded John the Baptist. And he heard that it was some things that this guy named Jesus was doing, and it kind of tricked Herod into thinking, Jesus, uh, I'm sorry, John the Baptist done come back from the dead. Mm. Now, this was a problem. Now, you and I would have had a problem that John the Baptist came back from the dead, but that wasn't so much why Herod had a problem. Him coming back from the dead was a problem, but the problem was before he had John the Baptist beheaded, John the Baptist was known for preaching against Herod because Herod actually, watch this, Herod actually took the wife of his brother. And many of us don't know this. Not only was Herodias the wife of his brother Philip, but she was also Herod's niece, Lord Jesus. Woo, Jesus. Can, can you say trifling? Woo, Jesus. Watch this. Woo, Jesus. Now, 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 so the scripture says, and Herod the Tetrad heard all that was done of him, and he was perplexed. He was like, man, John the Baptist done come back. But then he said, because uh, it was said unto him, John was risen from the dead, and then Psalm said it was lies. So he heard it was John the Baptist. 
Then he heard it was Elijah. Now he had a problem if it was Elijah too. Why would he have a problem if Jesus now was Elijah? Because that meant that Elijah had come back from the dead. And the problem with Elijah coming back from the dead, you remember Old Testament, Elijah was the one who preached against a, against a king and a queen, Ahab and Jezebel. And so uh, Herod, like, now, if even if it's Elijah, I got a problem because he's going to come back and he's going to preach against me and Herodias. That's a problem. Watch this. And then it says uh, one of the old prophets, he said, even if it's not John the Baptist, even if it's not Elijah, if it's one of the old, pro I still got a problem because the Old Testament actually prophesied that the prophets would come. And when the prophets show up, then the Messiah would come. He had a problem because if the Messiah would come, he understood just like many of the Jews mis misunderstood that the Messiah wasn't going to come to overcome, overrule overthrow the Roman government like he thought. So he said, if he come back and overthrow the Roman government and I'm the prince of, the, of Galilee, that means I ain't going to have no job. So whether it's John the Baptist, whether it's the old, old prophet, prophets of old or Elijah, Herod said, I got a problem. I got a problem. So he's like, who is this? Who is this? And so based on uh, the fact that we're in Lenten season and many of us that I'm speaking to now still really for real, for real, don't know who he is. I want to preach a couple of little points to you about who he is. <laughs> who is this? I want to answer the question. Three answers to the question. Who is this? Uh, verse number nine is where we're going to tabernacle for the rest of this time. Um, and Herod said, John, have I beheaded? But who is this? Lord Jesus. If he was asking me this question today, Deacon Bogan, I would tell him, Herod, and I'm also speaking to the world who don't know who he is today. First of all, Jesus is the son of God. You need to understand that Jesus is the son of God. Somebody need to know that Jesus wasn't just some old anybody. Jesus is the son of God. Watch this. He was the son of God. He is the son of God who was promised all the way back in Genesis chapter three, verse 15, as the seed of the woman. He was the he was foreshadowed in Genesis chapter 22 when Abraham was told to sacrifice your son Isaac. He was the one that the prophet Micah predicted that would be born in Bethlehem in Micah chapter five, verse two. He was the one who was the, who the prophet Isaiah actually said would be conceived of a very Watch this. And his name shall be called Emmanuel in Isaiah 7, 14. He was the one that Isaiah was talking about in Isaiah 9 and 6 when he said, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He was the one in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, watch this, that it was said that the birth of Jesus was on this wise when his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. He was the one that the wise men came from the east walking for over two years and came and asked the question, where is he who is born king of the Jews in Matthew chapter 2 verse 1 and 2? He's the one in Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. Watch this, that after he was baptized, the voice from heaven came down and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Herod, I want you to know that that's who he is. This is Jesus, the Son of God. The world, you need to hear this thing. Watch this, that Jesus is the Son of God. And if you're ever asking the question, who is this? Tell somebody that he is the Son of God. This little season is about the Son of God. But I ain't done because he asked a big question. I got a big answer. Uh, not only is he the Son of God, watch this, he's the 
sacrifice for our sins. Who is he? He's the sacrifice for our sins. Watch this. When men, when humans messed up in the garden by sinning, God had already declared, watch that, that the day that you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. And since Adam and Eve decided to eat of the fruit, guess what? Somebody or something had to die. Man had sinned and man was the one that deserved to die. But watch this, the perfect sacrifice named Jesus Christ. He stepped right in and became a sinless perfect sacrifice to pay for the sins of the world. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, it says, but without the shedding of blood, <laughs> there is no remission of sin. So Jesus is the one who took the punishment and the one who sacrificed his life as a substitution for the life, for your life and for mine. And I'm so glad that 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 10 is in the Bible because it tells us that he died for us that we might live with him. He was the perfect sacrifice. But I think Isaiah summed it up the best when he talked about what the perfect sacrifice of for sin. He says in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, that he was wounded for our transgressions. <laughs> he was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are here. Herod! Who is this? He is the sacrifice for our sin. You ought to clap your hands right there. But not only, not only is he the son of God, not only is he the sacrifice for our sin. Our final point, and I'm out of here. Uh, he is the savior of the world. Lord, have mercy. I'm going to stop right there and let you give some praise. He, he is the savior of the world. Who is this? Hear what I want you to know that he's the savior of the world. I saw in the scripture, Reverend Simpson, I saw in the scripture in verse number nine that not only did Herod ask the question, who is this? Then he made a statement. He says, and he desired to see him. Watch this. Watch this. He didn't just ask the question. He actually made a statement. He desired to see him. I'm here to tell somebody that Jesus is the savior of the world. And if you know that he's the savior of the world, you are the want to desire to see him at some point. During this Lenten season, you ought to want to desire to see him. Who is this? He's the Savior of the world. Why do I want to see him? Because he is the Savior that saved me from my sin. We should desire to see him. See, many of us, many of us, we desire to see our favorite athlete. Some of us desire to see our favorite movie star. Some of us want to see our some, those no personalities, but give me Jesus for mine during this Lenten season. There is none like him. We should want to see him because he is the Savior of the world. I know he's the Savior of the world. Ask me how I know. I read the written script in John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believing in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I know he's the Savior of the world, because verse number 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be, might be saved. So he is the Savior of the world. When somebody asks you, who is this? I want you to tell them loud and proud who's the son of God. I want you to tell them loud and proud that he's the sacrifice for our sin. I want you to tell them loud and proud that he's the savior of the world. And he proved himself that he's the savior of the world because one Friday on a hill called Calvary, they put nails in his hand. One Friday on a hill called Calvary, they hung him on that old rugged cross. He hung us from the sixth to the ninth hour. He hung his head and he died. But I want you to know that the Son of God couldn't stay dead because he died on a Friday. But early Sunday morning with all power in his hand, he got up. Who is this? This is my Savior. Who is this? This is my Lord. Who is this? This is Jesus. Clap your hands right there. Who is this? This is the Son of God. This is the sacrifice for sin. This is the Savior 
of the world. Amen. Clap your hands right there. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God that you have been here to witness, if you will, what God is or who God is during Lent. And so as we push further into Lent, if you ever wonder, who is this? Tell yourself that he is the son of God. He is the sacrifice for sin. And he is the savior of the world. Amen, amen, amen. Father, we thank you, we love you, we glorify you, we magnify you for all the marvelous things that you have done. We thank you, God, that you and you alone are Lord and Savior. Thank you that we don't have a question of who you are. We have a testimony that we are glad that you are who you are. You have been more to us than we could ever be to ourselves. And during this Lenten season, God, we recognize your sacrifice but we're looking forward to resurrection morning for everything that you've done for us. It led to, and it was paid for on that cross. So we love you. We thank you. It is in Jesus name. We do pray. Amen. Amen.